Mehu Jain. I'm an assistant professor here in SEAS, and I'm very pleased to introduce our eighth speaker for tonight, Dr. Mark Hunter, who is the Earl E. Werner Distinguished University Professor in the Ecology and Evolutionary Biology Department. Mark's research encompasses a broad mixture of population, community, and ecosystem ecology. Mark's favorite food is, and this is a direct quote, does coffee count as food? If so, then coffee. If not, then co chocolate covered coffee beans. <laughs> Mark's talk for today is titled Monarch Butterflies, Herbicides, and Our Food System. Thanks. Right, thanks for the introduction. Just, just three things to remember, really. Um, the first is that monarch butterflies, migratory monarch butterflies east of the Rockies, are declining. The second is I think that there are canaries in a coal mine of reductions in arthropods in our agricultural systems generally. And third, at least one of the reasons for the decline is a poor use of herbicides. That's what I'd like you to remember from this. So just a reminder that monarch butterflies are wonderful in part because they migrate. They spend the winter months in Mexico, in high elevation fir forests, and they come up to North America, those east of the Rockies, to breed in the summertime. Of course, the problem is that monarch populations are declining. What you see behind, you, behind me here is the population counts in Mexico since the mid-1990s, and you can see the populations have been declining over that time. Now, because the populations are declining in Mexico, this must be a Mexico problem, right? And so what we tend to see are issues about the over size of the overwintering population. And it is true to say that the populations have suffered in Mexico. This is an example photograph taken in 2004. You can see areas where the monarch butterflies were overwintering. Fast forward to 2008, we can see some of those areas have been clear cut, some have been thinned. We now have, have a reserve area and a small buffer zone, but clearly uh, a smaller area for monarchs to overwinter. You add in some climate change fueled winter weather, some severe, severe storms in the winter time, and it is fair to say that Mexico may be in part responsible for declining monarch populations. But let's flip that coin for a second and ask where those monarchs come from. And the answer is the Midwest. We generate, we are responsible for producing most of the adult monarchs that overwinter in Mexico. We're very good at it historically, this is where most of the monarchs come from. But what's interesting about that map is that it overlaps almost exactly with where we grow our corn and where we grow our soybean. Frankly, I don't see a problem there. Those, those two, uh, the, both corn and soybean and monarch production have actually been fairly compatible, I would say, for many years. Until this. This is an abomination and we have to make it stop. Here are counts of milkweed. Everything to the left of that line are real data. To the right of that line are best case scenarios for populations of milkweed. This is the only thing that monarchs will feed on. You'll notice those counts still seem pretty high. They're in billions. And people have said, I still see plenty of milkweed. We don't need to worry. That sounds desperately familiar to me. We've done this before. We've managed to take populations that we had billions of and reduce them to nothing. So I have a simple proposition for you. And that is, if this is a Mexico problem, and it's nothing to do with Roundup in the Midwest, then no other milkweed herbivores should be declining because no other milkweed herbivores migrate to Mexico. On the other hand, if we see coordinated declines of milkweed herbivores in general, matching those of monarchs, then we perhaps have to look at ourselves rather than casting the blame down to Mexico. So at the University of Michigan Biological Station for the last 11 years, we've been counting uh, over 1,200 stems of milkweed uh, each year counting all the monarchs and counting all the uh, other arthropods and this is why we have no social life. <laughs> uh, the bad news is that monarchs at UMBS uh, are not doing particularly well over that period of time. Uh, we've actually had two years of zero monarchs uh, in recent years and uh, declines. In fact, those declines map perfectly onto those declines in Mexico. What that means is that what we observe at UMBS is a good mirror for what we observe in Mexico. 
The question is, what's cause and what's effect? Fully 50% of all the common herbivores that feed on milkweed at UMBS are currently declining. Now it's true to say that monarchs are declining two times faster than the other herbivores, but 50% of the herbivores are declining. And these include some very charismatic beetles, uh, some absolutely gorgeous leaf mining flies, um, and, and truly remarkable species of ant. Maybe monarchs are getting hit in a couple of different places, but clearly this is not just a Mexico problem. So I'd like to leave you with the idea that monarchs are serving the purpose of the old canaries in the coal mine. They're warning us ahead of time of some appalling conditions in our agricultural systems. They're telling us perhaps that we're going to lose a majority of the arthropods that are beneficial in our systems. And remember, these are our pollinators, our predators, our parasites. They provide us with the trophic complexity to feed our birds. And apart from anything else, they form the foundation of the ecological systems that maintain life on Earth. Thank you very much.